hand adore you Just want to tell you Good morning, good morning. God is great and greatly to be praised. We have one candidate that's going to be baptized today. Let's give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. Test it one, two. All right. We're going to sing that song that's so appropriate at this time. Take me to the water to be baptized as we bring our candidate into the pool at this time. Sister John Tanta Eldon that's going to be baptized this morning. I'm going to ask if there are any family and friends of her in the house. Would you please stand? See you folks Sister Jatanda, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do you still want to be baptized and become a part of the Lord's church? Amen. Amen. your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, Son, and Amen. Let's give God praise at this time. We're going to have the opening of our worship experience. And uh, we're in the hands of uh, Minister Tate. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Just want to let you know that good morning. And to those that are watching with us this morning, if you're watching on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, or engaging on our live chat, we would like you to engage with us this morning as well. If you're watching on our church website, welcome to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and media, social media influencers are ready to engage along with you this morning real quick. We want to invite you to share this experience with others. So if you're watching on Facebook, share this, per share this on your personal timeline. You can also tag those whom you want to share this post with. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and then text the link to those worshiping 
to this worship service to the to your personal network and if you're in our live chat room on our website click on the invite button on the chat window and share this experience with others good morning to everyone may the lord bless you and keep you today is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad and all come on now today to this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it the word of the lord says from the rising of the son to the going down of the same this name of the lord shall be praised so if you can stand with us and worship this morning as we go before god and sing our congregational hymn
Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, from the New King James Version. Titus, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. And it reads, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of the righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We give you honor and we give you glory today. God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Forgive us for times we didn't get it right. Forgive us for times we didn't appreciate you and spend the right time with you. But thank you for grace. Thank you for grace and mercy because it has carried us a long way. Now, God, we ask you that you have your way in this service. Move every distraction. Breathe on us this morning. And we will freely praise you, giving you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and put your hands together this morning. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Let the glory, the glory of the Lord let it rise among rise us. Among let the glory of the Lord, of the Lord let it rise. rise. Let the praises of our King, King let it rise among us. Rise among let it rise. rise. Oh. oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh,
Let's give God praise. Oh, we could do a whole lot better than that. Let's give God praise. Good morning. And I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are in the house. If you are a father, either by nature or by nurture, I want you to stand at this time. We want to acknowledge your presence in the house. Any fathers, amen. Amen, amen. Happy Father's Day. Brothers, y'all are looking good. It is so good to see you all in the house. Come on, let's give God praise one more time for all the fathers. Amen, amen. It is my joy to uh, present this morning a new candidate for baptism, uh, Sister Jatanda Octavia Etting, Elting, um, was baptized this morning. And I'm going to ask if she would come so that we could present to her a baptismal certificate as well as a Bible. And let's give God praise as Sister Jatanda comes. Amen. How you doing, dear? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, first of all, so much for allowing for us to share in this wonderful occasion with you. You got a new birthday now, a spiritual birthday. And today you were baptized into the body of Christ. So what I'm going to do is I'm presenting to you, first of all, a certificate. And then secondly, this is your Bible. And we want you to get connected to either one of our Sunday morning live classes that take place on Sunday morning or check us out on Bible study online on Thursdays either at noon or at 7 to learn more about the Word of God. Read the Word of God daily. It will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. And uh, we're certainly delighted to have you as a part of our fellowship here at St. Paul. Now, let me say one more thing to you. Stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. All right? I, I, I don't want you to do like some folks. They join St. Paul, and then we don't see them no more until something happened. And then 10 years down the road, they say, but I joined back so-and-so, but we ain't seen you back so-and-so. So I want you to stay connected because that's what discipleship is all about. All right? Here's your Bible. So, Jatanda, as you go to your seat, St. Paul, can we celebrate and give God praise for her? Amen. You may return to your seat. Amen. Amen. It was a wonderful joy sharing with her as far as uh, the ordinance of baptism is concerned. We thank God for her. Now, if you all see something twirling on my wrist this morning, my, my baby, Cheris, bought me a watch with me and her face on it. I, 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 I got it this morning, so I wasn't able to get it sized. So it's going to be spinning on my wrist. It's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. Um, um, but I, I'm, I'm wearing it with, with, with pride because my baby got it for me uh, for Father's Day. <laughs> amen, amen. Let me just share a couple of things as we move forward with our worship experience just to remind you. Of course, uh, Quick 15 on Wednesday, join us for a wonderful time of fellowship and prayer. Also, for Bible study on noon and at 7. Also, June 25th at 10 o'clock, the Village Talk listening session is going to be taking place. COVID-19 is an infection nobody wants to catch, so it's important to stay safe in public. Uh, as you return to your community spaces, please remain healthy, wear your mask, practice social distancing. Uh, I've had family members as well as uh, dear friends who have come down with COVID and they're vaccinated. And the blessing is, is that they were vaccinated. Uh, so you never know where you'll catch COVID. Amen. And I know some folks get upset because they have to come to St. Paul and wear a mask and we practice social distancing. Um, but I'm trying to keep you safe. And I'm trying to keep you secure. So, this Village Talk listening session um, is going to take place on this Saturday at 10 o'clock. It is presented by Village Heartbeat Incorporation, and it's hosted by us here at St. Paul. The registration link is on our website, and it's being provided in chat windows for those who are watching online. So please join us. Next Sunday is Graduation Sunday, and uh, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. 
uh, graduation Sunday. Our guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. Kevin Muriel, who is the pastor of the Cascade United Methodist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Registration is now open for all of our graduates, high school, trade school, community college, undergrad, uh, as well as graduate school. Uh, go register today. Today is the last day you can register to be recognized on next Sunday. Particularly for those that are getting master and doctoral degrees, if you wear your robe and bring your hood, I will rehood you in that morning worship service. We want to celebrate you. Uh, also, Sunday, July the tenth, from Sunday, July tenth, from nine a.m. to two p.m., we're having a mobile blood drive here at the church. Uh, the mobile bus will be on Allen Street in front of the youth sanctuary. Um, and again, I want to thank those who have been a blessing to me as far as my campaign is concerned for president of our state convention. And if you would like to um, uh, give to, to support, you can send money through Zelle using the email address donations at rcscott2022.org or through PayPal. Or you can mail donations here to the church or to P.O. Box 69 1415 Mint Hill, North Carolina. And if you make a check, I make it committee to elect Robert Scott, elect Robert C. Scott. These donations are not tax deductible. Uh, and any remaining funds after all expenses that have been paid will be donated to the General Baptist State Convention. Let me just say that um, we want to encourage you to become vaccinated. Please, ma'am, please, sir, give that consideration. Um, we, there is a summer wave that is coming with COVID and there's going to be a fall wave. And as a matter of fact, um, they're now getting ready to recommend that you get a third booster shot. And I'm going to take me a booster shot as soon as possible. And I'm going to take another one and I'm going to take them as, as many as I have to. Amen. To remain safe and, and secure. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be um, mindful of that. As we... Uh, prepare to um, uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Um, my heart was was broken again uh, this week by the death of disciple Priscilla Rux, um, the wife of Brother Arthur Rux. Her services are pending. We want to lift up the family of disciple Alan Thomas, husband of disciple Aline Thomas. His services were yesterday here at the church. Uh, we also want to lift up the family of Christian Nance, uh, Margaret Alexander, who is the mother of Deacon Alfred Alexander, and the, um, Brother Melvin Chambers, the brother of Deacon Nate Chambers. We want to keep those persons lifted up in prayer. Also, uh, for persons that are being hospitalized, having surgery, Gloria Dixon, uh, Deacon Arvette Pearson had surgery. We continue to lift up uh, Yvonne Pettis. Uh, we want to lift up Deacon Tina Ross, and of course, um, my predecessor, Dr. Paul Drummond, and his wife, uh, Sister Thomasina Drummond, want to keep those persons lifted up in prayer. Um, God is a healer, and God is a keeper. And so I'm going to ask that uh, Minister Pate will come. He's going to take us to the throne of grace, and um, we'll move forward with our worship experience. God of grace and God of peace. God of love. God of power, we come before you this morning, lifting up those that are bereaved. God, for those that are handling the bereavement right now, God, we ask you that you send a presence of peace. God, we ask you that you carry them through this transition, God. God, for you know the hairs that are numbered on our heads, so God, you are not caught by surprise in any situation, and you are not caught off guard. And because you're not caught off guard, God, we cast our cares upon you. We give our burdens to you, God, because you're strong enough to carry them. Now, God, we pray that you begin to help the sick and shut in, God, for those that are in need of a healing, God. We ask you that your healing power touch their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray for healing, God. Healing to move, God. Healing to restore, God. God, we pray for your resurrection power that resides within inside of us, God, to move within them. And God, that healing and miracles will take place. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe that God is answering that prayer, can you give God praise right now? 
Hallelujah. Amen. Before I call for the offering, I want to do something um, um, a little different. Um, the second Sunday of I'm going the second Sunday of July, during the morning worship service, we're going to be ordaining, setting aside uh, fourteen people to serve this church as deacons. Amen. I thought I would get a bigger amen on that. Um, they have been going through training for the last 18 months with me. And I'm going to ask those persons that um, you all have given to me. Uh, these are names that you all have given prior to going <laughs> into the pandemic um, to serve as um uh, to be put in training for deacon. And so I'm going to ask if they are here, would you stand at this time? Uh, deacons in training, would you stand? I believe Brother Joe, you hold up your hand. He's already standing. Come on, let's give God praise. We could do a whole lot better than that. These are going to be your servant leaders. If they pass one more test. <laughs> Uh, if they pass, one more test. So um, um, it's been a joy working with them. Uh, but on the second Sunday, which is going to also be Family and Friends Sunday, we're going to be setting them aside. The guest preacher for the day is going to be the Reverend Dr. Mar Marvin A. McMickle, who is uh, pastor emeritus of the Antioch Baptist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. He's written several books, but one of the books he has wrote written is um, uh, the deacon in the Black Baptist Church, which we've been using, and uh, it has uh, hopefully and prayerfully shed a lot of insight into the role and responsibility of deacons. So uh, pray for them uh, as they prepare to uh, go through another series of batteries of tests, and um, yeah, just pray for them. Amen, amen, amen. All right. It is offering time. Let's give God praise for the wonderful capacity to give. And as we prepare to give unto the Lord, um, there are several ways that you can give here at St. Paul Church. One way is by either uh, mailing your check or money order to the church at 1401 Allen Street, um, 28205, or you can drop off your check, cash, or money order here at the church. Uh, if you do that, please make sure someone is here to receive your offering. Um, by calling the church at 704-334-5309. The other way you can give is through either ACS or Church Life, as far as our website is concerned. And then you can also give through the app called Givelify. And if you don't have that app, uh, go to your app store, search for St. Paul Baptist Church, search for Givelify, rather. And then uh, search for St. Paul Baptist Church, download uh, that app, and in three clicks, you can give. You can also give a physical offering, and there's a basket on the road that is in front of you that at the appropriate time after prayer, you can drop your offering in that basket. So however you're giving this morning, if you would take your offering, if you can, place it in your right hand. We want to give God what's right, not what's left. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to partner with you as far as giving is concerned. We cannot beat you giving no matter how hard we try. God, if you would, take these gifts of ours and multiply them in a Godful way so that ultimately your witness, your word, your worship, and your work can go forth through the St. Paul Church and you be glorified through our actions and our efforts. For those that are practicing the discipline of tithing, bless them according to your word. For those that are giving something, bless and increase their faith to a place of obedience. And then, God, even for those that aren't giving anything, if you would continue to tenderize their hearts until they come to the understanding they can't beat you giving, no matter how hard they try. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. For those that have fiscal offering, if you would, just place it in the basket that is in front of you. Amen. And our account team will receive it.
give the Lord praise. Thank you, Sister April, for providing lead on that and to our young adult ensemble for offering us your gift of uh, song. Amen. Um, I think that one of the things that kind of get me about where we are in the life of the church today is that there are those who say that young adults don't want to have anything to do with the church and don't want to participate, but we here at St. Paul are going to make that to be a lie. Uh, we got some we got some wonderful, wonderful people who are a blessing to us as far as the body of Christ is concerned. And I think that it's important for us to understand that, uh, you know, uh, when you talk about millennials, they're not, they're not youth. They, they good and grown. Um, they got bills and kids and house notes and car notes and insurance and other concerns like everybody else. And so we got to be careful not to treat them like youth. Uh, my daughter is getting ready to become a youth. Uh, uh, but millennials are not youth. They, they good and grown like the rest of us. And, and we need to treat them accordingly and, and um, allow for them to bless us accordingly. I want to, um, last Sunday I came to you all from Romans chapter 5. And um, um, in, in that reading, I, I saw something in Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 6 through 11. And I want to kind of, Go back to that well again. Um, so Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. Um, I want to pick, pick up there for a moment. Uh, you can go ahead and be seated, dear. Go ahead and be seated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and be seated. All right. Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 6. In the New King James Version, the scripture reads like this, For when we were still without strength, and in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I really could have stopped right there. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. <clears throat> but God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his own life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. I'm going to use the same subject I used last week. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. Um, I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. Now, I'm going to call it part two. So it'll be like watching a television so where there's a continuation. This is part two. I don't deserve it but I'll take it. <clears throat> One of the unfortunate realities of living in 2022 in this hyper-politicized, technologically saturated, 
false religious advertising, new age spirituality, iPhone, Samsung, secularized postmodern age is the idea that the world owes you something. In other words, we live in an age of entitlement that makes us think that whatever we ask for, we ought to get it on the spot. That whatever we desire, we can have it. Whatever we want, we can take it. Laziness and greed have become the byproducts of this type of mentality. There are those persons who are under the erroneous assumption that the government owes them a check every month while they do nothing except stay at home and play video games. There are those who assume that just because they show up on the job but do nothing productive, contribute nothing meaningful, yet they're the first ones with their hands out wanting a paycheck. There are persons in relationships who think they are entitled to certain benefits just because of who they are and how they look. And it's unfortunate, but even our local churches have brought into what I would call this entitlement mentality. There are those who believe that God should be ecstatic, happy, overjoyed, just by the mere fact that you showed up at St. Paul today either online or in the sanctuary. Does not the Lord know you got a busy schedule and other agendas and previous priorities? As a matter of fact, I know there are some folks who think that God really should be divinely happy because you're taking 90 minutes out of your time to sit up in a worship service because Lord knows you could be doing a whole lot of other stuff right about now. Unfortunately, this attitude of entitlement is demonstrated in the way that we view our relationship with God. Not as Savior, not as Lord, not as Creator, not as ruler of the universe, but, ra but rather we look at God as being a genie and a lamp, uh, being the blesser. That whenever we want something, we, we go to God or being some type of cosmic Santa Claus. We want God to give us the desires of our heart, but we don't want to do what the Lord tells us to do. And we treat the blessings of God as entitlement rather than understanding that whatever God has given us, it's really more than we deserve. I, I know this, this is a hard word for, for some of us because we, we really do believe that God owes us something. And, and, and it's predicated upon a misinterpretation of several biblical texts that we've taken out of context. Texts like, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Uh, a text like, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Or that text in the psalm, delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. These promises implies relationship and, and they imply connection. But None of us, if we're honest, have been so great or so grand, so good or so perfect, so righteous and so holy, if we're honest, to think that God owes us anything. And, and, and I want to say, St. Paul, that this is the issue of the sermon for me today. Now, I'm speaking personally, um, and if it hits you, then that's fine and dandy, but when when I think about my life and about who I am and about the makeup of my being, uh, I'm just glad God saved me from my sins. Um, I'm, I'm nothing more, St. Paul, than a sinner saved by grace. And, and I'm at the mercy of the Almighty God. And I don't know about anybody else, but when I survey my life, 
I've had a whole lot of stuff that could have taken me out. And, and the Lord kept me when I was too dumb and crazy to keep myself. If we're honest, we have to admit that in life there have been mishaps, missteps, mistakes, misunderstandings, misuse, mistrust, misouts, misplaced, misled, misjudged, misinterpreted, misfits, misfortune, misdemeanors, misdeeds, miscues, misdirection, misconduct, miscommunication, and mischief. We've had a whole lot of misses. There have been some times where we messed up so bad until we wonder if God could really straighten us out. We have to place our confidence and faith in God who has not failed us yet. And it doesn't mean that God has done everything we wanted God to do, but it does mean that whatever God has allowed to happen in our lives, it is based upon two things. Number one, decisions we have made and number two, for our benefit and for his glory. Paul was correct when he wrote those poignant words. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. When we survey the concept of all, that word really means all. Uh, not just some things, but all things, the things that God doesn't want to happen in your life and the things that God allows to happen in your life. But that word all really infers that you and I live in a universe that is so big, so vast, until if you really ponder the significance of who you and I are, as human beings in this vast universe, we are nothing but small, insignificant matters of cell and protoplasm, tissues and muscle. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou should visit him? Yet God deserves to be in relationship with a bunch of dust. Dust. Dust, y'all, not even dirt, dust. Do you know what dust is? Dust is stirred up dirt. It, 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 it ain't even something you can handle too well. Dust, not even dust. And, and yet, God wants to be in relationship with dust. And, and God goes out of God's way to reclaim us from the misdeeds of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. Think about the biblical story and appreciate the writers of the authors. See God doing something behind the scenes of our misdeeds and mistakes to produce and present something positive and life-changing despite our bad choices. Isn't it amazing that when you do a survey of your life, and you look at all the negative things that have happened to you along the way, you need to wonder how in the world are you still alive and kicking? We haven't dotted every I. God knows we haven't crossed every T. We've done some stuff that if we're honest, it makes God shake God's head. And God, watch this, should have dealt with us harshly because we constantly and consistently fall short of the standard. Think about the struggles that keep you from being your best and authentic self. Think about the darkness that, that haunts your spirit even now. Think about those places we should not have gone, those things we should not have done, those persons we should leave alone, those things we should not touch. Think about every time, every time, I don't know how to say this. Think, just, just. 
Just think about every time you got drunk. And you got in a car. And somehow you made it home. Just, just, just think about every time you got high and, and you didn't do something that could have taken you out. Just, just think about the time you had unprotected sex and you didn't contract something you couldn't get rid of. Y'all do know I'm a real preacher. about the time that your addiction could have killed you. Just, just, just think about those areas of your life where you ain't pleased and you know God ain't pleased. It ain't a good feeling, isn't it? Feel shame and you feel guilt and you feel embarrassed may cause you to want to even get up and leave the church right now because you're going like, I didn't come to church for this. I, I, I'm not beating you up. But if you're feeling a little uneasy, it might be the Holy Ghost convicting you. Yeah, I know. Here he go talking about sin. But all of us have sinned. From the choir stand through the pulpit to the back door. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I got good news. And that good news is that our sins and our shortcomings, our misdeeds and our mistakes do not have the last word. Here, 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 here is what makes me want to jump out of my shoes in this text. While you and I were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's, that's something none of us deserve. Today, the Apostle Paul informs us that we were unable to do anything to change our sinful state. While we were unable to change our inherent condition, Christ died for you and me. The love that God has for you and me is really beyond our wildest imagination. Paul talks about being reconciled back to God through Jesus. He helps us to understand that this is the heart of the gospel. This is the heart of the For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. But verse 17 of John 3, 16 and 17 shouts me, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's, that's, that's why in an age where people want to get rid of doctrine and dismiss the notion of suffering, we got to remember that you and I were made right with God through Jesus Christ because Jesus died on a cross one Friday and God got him up early Sunday morning. Now I'm slow walking this for a moment because I got to help us to understand you got to know why you believe what you believe. Because it's some, it's some cray cray folk out there that's spitting up some stupid doctrine that is unbiblical and it's on Facebook and Twitter and it's being perpetuated in the streets. I saw the other day somebody said that they didn't believe that Jesus was sinless. Do, 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 did y'all hear what I said? Do, do y'all know that, that that's important for you to understand that if Jesus ain't sinless, you ain't saved? See, 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 this is why I got to do what I got to do. 
Because everybody should have been clapping on that. If, if, if Jesus ain't sinless, then he can't be God. And if he ain't God, then he can't be our Savior. And if he ain't our Savior, you and I are in trouble. I can't appreciate all Jesus did for me if I get rid of the cross. I, I can't shout about what Jesus did for me if I dismiss the resurrection. I, 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 as a matter of fact, we ought to shut the doors of the church if Jesus didn't die on a hill called Calvary and God didn't get him up early one Sunday morning. Church, this is why it is so important for you to know why you believe what you believe. Doctrine is important. Because here's where a lot of us get stuck. A whole lot of us get stuck. We talk about God being love. But we fail to understand that God being a God of love is also a God of judgment. And we love to talk about the love of God, but we don't want to talk about the judgment of God. And we love to lift up this attribute of God being love, but God's love ain't free. Because when you talk about God's love, you got to deal with judgment. I'm going somewhere with this. That, that if you want to bask in the love of God, because we know that God's love is connected to God's blessing, you got to understand that God's blessing has a cause. And this is why it's so easy for us who got our own drama and mess, that when somebody calls us out, uh-oh, or somebody tells us we're wrong, what's the first thing you hear folks say? You can't judge me. Am I right? Uh, oh, 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 here, here, here go a good one. God love everybody. And yes, it's true, God love all of us. But just because God loves us doesn't mean that God tolerates our mess. Uh, listen, listen, listen. This is what gets me with those who have the mentality that you could be wrong as two left feet. But they don't want you to call them out. And they don't want you to tell them they're wrong. Y'all know these type of persons. They in your family. Mm -hmm. You gonna go have lunch with some of them today? Yeah, 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 yeah. They 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 they're on the job. You gonna go work with them tomorrow? And God knows. Scott, they in, somebody say, say it. Uh, they're, they're in St. Paul. You, you know them. You know them. They do everything they big, bad, and grown enough to do. But don't call them out. Don't, 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 don't tell them they're wrong. Don't, don't, don't correct them. Don't discipline them. You want cheap grace. This ain't no shouting sermon. But I promise God has given me homiletical precision that if I cut you, I'm going to stitch you back up real good. Paul is saying, grace is not cheap. Salvation is not free. It costs God something. What did it cost God? It cost God, God's son, who gave his life, shedding his blood, that you and I may be made right with God. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I want you to, I want you to catch. I want you to catch what I'm getting ready to say. Jesus gave up his glory to enter the ghetto called earth. 
to save crazy, trifling, tricky folks like you and me and give us the gift of salvation for free predicated upon what he has done knowing that some of us are going to reject him. And when you think about it, beloved, you got to admit God did not have to do it. What, 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 what's, what's connected with God giving us something that we don't deserve? What, what's, what's connected with God giving us something? That, but, 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 but can I tell you, you better take it. You better take it. And, and, and here's what I want you to understand. First of all, you better take the fact that Jesus took the punishment for our sins. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Who the ungodly? Us. Well, well, while you and I didn't have the ability to deal with our sins, Christ died for us. We were in a hopeless, helpless, hapless condition. We were totally helpless to do anything to make ourselves right with God. And when you look at the biblical history and even when you look at modern day examples, we got to admit that even the best of the best still fell short. That our righteousness are like filthy rags in the sight of God. That there is nobody that is perfect, nobody that is sinless. All, air last one of us. Air, like Nellie said, air last one of us. Sinners. Messed up from the flow up. However, we don't want to talk about sin. No. Not, not, not in this postmodern culture. We don't want to talk about sin. But y'all, Jesus came because of sin. He came because of your sins and my sins. Jesus didn't come so you can get a new man, a new woman, a new bay, a new boo, a new house, a new car, a breakthrough, education, right to vote, or go to the mall and run up your credit card. He came to die for the ungodly. And all sinners are considered to be ungodly. And being ungodly is more than just character. It is a state of position. Ungodliness means that you and I are separated from the creator of the cosmos. That we don't have the right to covenant blessings. Since you and I are sinners and we don't have the ability to approach a holy God without a sacrifice, there's this process known as what is called blood atonement. And blood atonement, back during the Old Testament times, was when they took a lamb or a bull or some type of animal and they slayed the animal on the altar and they gave what was called a blood sacrifice. Now, with my unholy and unrighteous self, I don't have the ability to come before a righteous, perfect God on my own, preach Robert Charles Scott, because God has the full sovereign right to reject me. Oh, God. My sins require a sacrifice. And no human in the past, present, or future can handle what God requires. Because every time we think God has someone, either male or female, to be a representative of us before God, they messed up. They messed up. Now, I'm getting ready to say some names y'all might shout about, and I'm going to say some names y'all ain't going to like. But Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Cain killed Abel. Noah got drunk. Abraham lied. Sarah laughed at God. Isaac was timid. Rebecca tricked her husband. Jacob was a trickster. Joseph was a spoiled brat. Moses was a vigilante. 
Aaron was a crowd pleaser. Miriam was jealous. David was an adulterer and a conspirator. Rahab was a prostitute. Solomon was a philanderer. Samson was a playboy. Jeremiah was a crybaby. Peter was a denier. Paul was a church persecutor. Augustine had flesh control issues. Martin Luther was an anti-Semite. Mother Teresa had her doubts. Your mama had her issues. Your daddy had his mess. And you got your stuff. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I know, I, I, know, I know that will make you feel good, but God says, I require a sacrifice, but that sacrifice could not come from this world because this world has been tainted by sin, but God loved us so much that God allowed God's self in the form of Jesus Christ to become the payment for our sins. What can wash away my sins? Y'all help me preach this thing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, 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 now I know, I know somebody sitting there in the seat saying, so what? Who gives a flip? Why, why does Jesus taking my place God do anything with my reality? Reverend, have you been watching the news lately? Gas is $5 a gallon. You better be glad I'm here. <laughs> In inflation is at a 40-year high. Somebody's marriage is falling apart. You got bad news from the doctor. Mortgage just went up because credit rate went up. You can't shake the addiction. Can't get out of a bad relationship. Got to go to court tomorrow. Folks acting crazy and idiotic on the job. You can't even get a job. The job you got ain't paying you anything. You got woman drama. You got man trauma. They're about to foreclose on your house. You don't want to take this mess anymore. People are talking about you. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. So what? Reverend, yeah. here it is. You and I live in a broken world because of sin. And if sin or if negativity that you're experiencing is a byproduct of being a sinner, then the effects of the sin should kill you. But since Jesus died for our sins he takes the power of our sins that should kill us or at least drive us crazy where we couldn't function with this life uh, and twist it in such a way that God says in spite of your sin I'm going to show the devil what I'm working with because I can use you regardless. Preach Robert Charles God. God loves you so much that God saw some of God's self in you and said there's something in you worth redeeming, worth saving, worth taking out of the trumpet of this is the hope that you and I got in the world. You and I ought to shout because when you take the cross and you sit over against the hell that you're dealing with, whenever you suffer, whenever you're tempted, whenever the devil tries to get you to doubt the love of God, you better remember the old rugged cross. The worst suffering in the world cannot touch what Jesus went through on the cross. And when you think about the cross, think about this. God loves you. God loves you loves you. God loves you. God loves you. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're dealing with. God loves you. Divorce, God loves you. Molested, God loves you. Ex-con, God loves you. Jailbird, God loves you. Strung out on crack, God loves you. Lesbian, God loves you. Gay, God loves you. Bisexual, God loves you. Transsexual, God loves you. Trans gender. God loves you. Queer. God loves you. Intersexual. God loves you. Asexual. God loves you. HIV.
HIV, God loves you. Adulterer, God loves you. Fornicator, God loves you. Liar, God loves you. Murderer, God loves you. Thief, God loves you. Left by your spouse, God loves you. Heartbroken, God loves you. Got cancer, God loves you. In debt, God loves you. Struggling to pay your bills, God loves you. Lost a loved one, God loves you. If you're dying, God loves you. If you don't believe in God, he still loves you. Don't go to church. He loves you. And if you are a sinner, he sure enough loves you. And it's something we don't deserve. There is nothing else that God can do to prove God's love to you by what he did with Jesus on the cross. (sighs) Your life, my life is made better because of Jesus' life. Uh, In other words, because Jesus came, lived, died, watch this, and lives even now, you and I can have life. Jesus says, the thief does not come except for the steal, to kill, and to destroy. I come that you might have life, and you might have life what? More abundantly. Now, can I do a little teaching just for a moment? Because a lot of us think that the thief is the devil. The thief ain't the devil. The thief is bad religious teachers and preachers who teach bad doctrine to get you under their control. As your pastor, I'm coming not to get you under my control, but I'm here to free you so you can be everything that God would have for you to be. So, so, so watch the flow of the text. From verse 7 to about verse 10, through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed in his death, We are made right with God because of his life. That through the life of Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. In other words, sin ain't got to run your life anymore. The mere fact, here's the shout, that Jesus died on a cross and God raised him from the dead means that regardless of how jacked up my current reality is, my mess does not have the last word in my life because if God can raise Jesus from the dead, then certainly God can give me strength to endure what I'm dealing with right now. I, 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 I hope I'm making some sense, y'all. Because if God can... Scott, if God can love me while I'm a sinner, but being a, if, if God can love me while I'm God's enemy, how much more ooh, will God do for me when I become his child? Child. Listen, listen, the gap that separated us from God, your sins, my sins, that separated us from God is as wide as one end of the universe to the other. Did y'all get that? It, it, It is figuratively as wide as one end of the universe to the other. But the love of God, and the cross of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus bridge that gap when you have faith in Jesus Christ. 
oh, this is getting good to me. So watch this. So because of my faith in Jesus Christ, that gap is no longer as one end of the universe to the other, but that gap is like you jumping a small ditch. It means I could count on God to get me to the place of destiny because I'm connected with God. And aren't you glad that God is no longer against you? That God is for you? Because if God be for you, God is more than the whole doggone world against you. <sighs> Somebody about to run out their shoes and I'm going to join you. If God can save me from my sins uh, through the cross, then certainly God can give me the power to deal with whatever I'm going through right now. If God can save me from my sins through the cross, then don't you know that God can help you pay your bills, that God can help you deal with cancer, that God can help you deal with your enemies, that God can help you deal with those crazy folks on the job, that God can help you deal with depression, that God can keep you in the midst of your hopelessness. I really wish somebody felt what I was trying to say. All things work together for the good. Aren't you glad that God has the ability to take a negative and because of the cross he makes it a positive. God can take something bad and make it work for your good. Come here Joseph. Joseph said, my brothers put me in a pit then they sold me to Potiphar in the palace, but God was preparing me to become the second in charge of Egypt to save my brothers. Ask Moses, Moses, who was a fugitive of justice, but he heard God on a burning bush. Had it not been at the burning bush, Israel would still be enslaved right now. Ask Rahab, who was a prostitute, but she helped Joshua and his troops. Ask Jesus, who died on a cross one Friday afternoon, but hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. God raised him from the dead. Do I have have anybody in the house who have to admit you would not be where you are had you not gone through what you're going through had you not had some headaches, some heartaches, some trials, some tribulation it looked dark, you were tired of talking about it, your faith seemed to fail you but you got to give God praise cause God took your situation, turned that thing upside down and made it work for your good because of what you went through, you prayed harder because of what you got, went through, God got some folks out of your life because of what you went through. God lift you up out of the mire pit. Am I talking to any man, woman, boy, or girl? They ain't afraid to admit the hell that you've been through. Let you shout hallelujah right now. The trouble that you went through. Let you have triumph right now. Who in the house ain't afraid to give God praise because God took what should have killed you and let it make you stronger. My time is up. Um, yeah. Um, my, 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 my time is up. Um, um, I don't think folks understand, Scott, all that we have to go through to put on a brave face for the people of God. And this is what I'm talking about, because in verse 11, here go Paul again, saying, and not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Now, Y'all, this is the craziest statement I've ever seen Paul make. That, that, that we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus, whom we now receive reconciliation. Paul is saying this, watch this, not before the suffering, but in the suffering. All right, I, I, I know that messed y'all up. But, but here's what I want to drop on you. That despite moments of suffering, find your joy. Yeah. Now, 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 this for the grown folks in Jesus. This ain't for the babes, cause babes can't handle this. This ain't for folks that 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 really don't know who Jesus is, cause 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 you looking for blessings and all this stuff. This this for the grown folk. That this for this for the folk who know what it means to go through many dangers, toils and snares. 
I've lived long enough to know that being in relationship with God doesn't mean I won't have trouble. But trouble ain't got to have me. Why? Why? And notice, I ain't said be happy. I said have joy. Because happiness is dependent upon what's happening. But joy <laughs> comes from the Lord. I'm, I'm getting ready to bring it on in. I, I've held y'all long enough. Uh, and, 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 and we have joy not because we got a new car. We have joy not because you got a new boo or bae. We have joy not because you got some new clothes. We have joy not because you got some money in your bank account. You got joy because you know who God is through Jesus Christ. I've discovered that joy is not in material possessions. Joy is not in human relationships. Joy, yeah, is not in power or position. Joy is not in your money or your honey. I feel my Mississippi slipping out. Joy is not in Donna Karen dress. And joy is not in a Hugo Boss suit. But do I have anybody that ain't afraid to admit this morning? You wouldn't have joy if you didn't know who Jesus is. And Nehemiah said that the joy of the Lord, yeah, is my strength. Uh, good morning, St. Paul. May the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but I want to talk to some serious folks in the house. Uh, that when you think about all the hell you've gone through, think about. your mind. You want to know why you didn't blow your brains out. You want to know why you didn't go to the bathroom and take a whole bunch of pills and drift off to your death. You want to know why it did not work. That's because God has placed something within you that kept you when everything else around you was falling apart. And I just wonder, do I have any children of the Lord that ain't afraid to admit that God has given you everything that you need? So when you focus not on your situation, but if you cast your eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh your help, and realize your help comes from the Lord, you can have joy. How can you make it uh, with all the hell you're going through? Uh, how can you make it uh, through worry and depression? Uh, how can you make it uh, through tears and problems? Uh, how can you make it uh, through cancer and calamity? Uh, it's real easy. Uh, you gotta have joy in God, not about God, but you better have joy in God. I'll see y'all later. So I'm here to prophesy. Don't drop your head. Don't walk around defeated. You better have joy because when folks start looking at you and say, why are you smiling? Why are you shouting? Why are you giving God praise? Why you haven't lost your mind? You better tell them, I don't like what I'm going through, but I still got joy. I may be crying, but I still got joy. I may be broke, but I still got joy. It may hurt like hell, but I still got joy. Hey, hey, is there anybody here that know this joy that I have? The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. I didn't earn it, but I still got joy. I couldn't buy but I still got joy should have gone crazy but I still got joy I don't deserve it but I still got joy and when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me I ought to give him praise because of my joy say yes say yes say yes don't 
deserve mercy, but you better take it. Don't deserve grace, but you better take it. Don't deserve joy, but you better take it. Don't deserve peace, but you better take it. Don't deserve favor, but you ought to take it. Don't deserve salvation, but you ought to take it. Don't deserve healing, but you ought to take it. Don't deserve God, but you ought to take him. Say yes. Hey. 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 I still got joy. I need, I, need, I need somebody to take about a five second praise break. And when you think about all the stuff that you've gone through that should have wiped you out, that should have driven you crazy, but you're here or you're watching us online with a reasonable portion of health, life, and strength, you ought to give God praise because you're still here. It ain't because of your goodness. It's because of his grace. Hey, 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 hey. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. anybody else but God knows I wouldn't be where I am had I not had Jesus in my life hold it hold it, hold it. a sinless Jesus Y'all better stop drinking all this Kool-Aid. Hey, 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 hey. The Bible is still true. 
God didn't send Jesus to condemn us, but to save us. We already condemned ourselves. And, and, and here's what I want to impress upon you. Because this is how lax we've come, become, have become because of sin. Do you realize that God is so sovereign, God is so holy, God is so righteous, that every time you and I commit a sin in thought, word, or deed, Every time we commit a sin, the sin of omission, not doing something we're supposed to do, the sin of commission, doing something we ain't got no business doing. Did you not know that God has the sovereign right beyond your faults and give you another chance? But I'm here to let you know, I, and I got to sound the alarm. One day the chances are going to run out. Judgment is coming. And regardless of what folks say, there is a heaven and there's a hell. And there will be a judgment. I want you to be on the right side of God. And if you're here right now, I want you to understand that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. But salvation is just the basic. That's the ground level. He wants you to grow in him. I want to lead you in a short prayer, a prayer of new life, a prayer of brand new start. And as I lead you in this prayer, this prayer touches you in the church, in the sanctuary, or online. I want you to make a decision for either Christ or church. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Repeat after me. God, I thank you that while I was yet a sinner, you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died on a cross for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. And I believe one day he's coming back but until then send your Holy Spirit into my life so I can live for you uh, forgive me of all my sins help me be the person you want me to be in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I pray this prayer amen if you prayed that prayer sincerely, you prayed that prayer in in your head and heart, uh, salvation is yours. We pray it together for those of us that made a commitment some time ago. It's a reminder, but if you prayed that prayer this morning, at this time, and you mean it in your head and heart, you're sincere, salvation is yours. But I want you to do something with receiving this gift. Now that you have the gift, if you're in the church, if you're in this physical space right now, and you just prayed that prayer and you meant that prayer in your head and your heart. I want you to hold up your hand right now, wherever you may be. Would you hold up your hand? Listen, if you got your hand, come down right now. Come down right now. I need you to come down right now. If you got your hand up, come down right now. Come down right now. If you got your hand up, come down right now. Amen. Come on down. Deacons, y'all get in the aisle. Y'all walk with these folks. God bless you. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Look at what God is doing. Look at what God is doing. Look at what God is doing. If you're in the balcony, I want to invite you to come on down as well. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Uh, St. Paul, we can do a whole lot better than this. Look at what the Lord is doing. Look at what the Lord is doing. If you're in the balcony, I want to invite you to come on down. I want to invite you to come on down. I want to invite you to come on down. You don't have to be separated from our God anymore. If you're in the house, I want to invite you to come on down. I want to invite you to come on down. Come on down. Listen, if you're watching us online, on Facebook, on our website, do me this favor. Type in salvation. Next steps are. And um, somebody's going to contact you by 5 o'clock tomorrow to let you know what you need to do. If you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on the phone, Email us at connect at svbcnc.org or call the church office at 704 334. Reach you. One of my staff by five o'clock tomorrow is going to reach out to you, let you know what the next steps are. We are delighted that if you're accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior online or in the house, we celebrate you. Let's go be your pastor. Uh, we, we believe the Bible. We preach the Bible. We teach the Bible. And we're going to love on you. And we ain't here to judge you. We're not here to judge you. We're here to love on you. And we're here to help you to be what God will have you to be. Now, we're going to, if we see you doing something out of kill to go put to side and say, hey, God desert, desires better for you than that. All right? Is that all right? 
So if you're in the house, you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. If I'm talking to you right now. Would you hold up your hand? Would you hold up your hand? If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a church home, hold up your hand. If I can be your pastor, you got your hand up. If I could be your pastor, will you come on down, please? Will you come on down? God bless you. Will you come on down? Will you come on down? Will you come on down? Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Y'all, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. God bless you. 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 Come on, St. Paul. Come on. Keep keep it going. 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 Listen, if y'all could cheer, if y'all could cheer for the Panthers, and if you could cheer for the, the Hornets, then certainly you could cheer for our Lord and what he's doing in the lives of these that are becoming part of our foe here at St. Paul. Amen. Amen. If you are here temporarily and you're just looking for a church on the phone, email us at connect at spbcnc.org. You really, you really, you really have made God smile today. You really have made God smile. So let me put on my mask. Amen. How you doing? God bless you. God bless you. I want you to follow those persons. And as you all head out, God's going to, we're going to shout and give God praise. Hey, dear. Hey, dear. God bless you, man. God bless you. 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 God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, St. Paul. Let's give God praise. Pressure ministry, our media ministry. Thank you all so very much. Um, and uh, to our music ministry, thank you so very much. And deacons, thank you. And our ministers, I, I am indebted to you. God is great and greatly to be praised as we leave. We, we don't deserve it. But how many of y'all going to take it? Amen. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. God, we thank you for an incredible and amazing day. And as we leave from this place this morning. And God, um, as we celebrate even Juneteenth, we thank you for the freedom that came late to our, our ancestors down in Texas. Now, God, as we leave from this place or this space, keep us in your sovereign care and help us to ever appreciate the salvation you offer to us through your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a strong, blessed week in the Lord. I love you, but God loves you even more. Be safe and be blessed.